<laughs> hey church family, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. We got uh, some special dads in here today too. Uh, yeah, we do. Celebrating We're Father's right Day. right here. Alex, what did your kids do for you on Father's Day? I don't know, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> oh, that's right, because we're pre-recording. But why don't you tell us what your kids, your wife did for you on Father's Day? Did you get a T-bone steak? I'm hoping it's something special and important. We always do something as a family, though. Our family tradition is um, we go to the wildlife park with uh, my in-laws and uh, my brother and sister-in-law. We all go with all the kids. We have a picnic, we go to the wildlife park, go see the, the animals, and that has always been our Father's Day, except for last year because of COVID. Now, hopefully this year we're able to, we're able to uh, start doing that again. We're looking forward to it, and fingers crossed we're able to. Very good. Well, that sounds like a great Father's Day tradition. Let us know in the comments today uh, what you're doing for Father's Day. And if you're new, check out that Connect card in the comments. We'd love to start a conversation with you and connect with you. Um, we're going to have some worship, some music today. We're getting into the book of Ephesians today. Steve's going to be here uh, to lead us through the book of Ephesians. So if you want to turn there now, but before all that, we got the good news. The good news. If you want to be a good news character, then you have to act like one. Wink, 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 wink. Good morning and welcome to the Good News Network. My name is Asher. And my name's Adeline. And happy Father's Day to all those dads. I love you, Daddy. And we will be giving you a free drink, like coffee. Mm, I don't know, juice? Whatever. And we'll be showing you that right now. Hey guys, it's Aiden. You might be wondering, I thought you were retired. Nope, I'm back here for just a little quick thing to say. Happy Father's Day, and here is a little blessing for our fathers. If you haven't heard before, Asher told us that there is a free drink for all the amazing dads. So all you have to do is get a scan code. You'll find a link in the description of this video and on our website and also on our social media. Go bless your dad with the drink today. Come on, let's go. Simply go inside, scan the QR code that we gave you, enjoy, enjoy a drink with your dad. Don't forget to get your drink. Now it's time for the drink of the week. What goes ha ha thump? What? A man laughing his head off. Ha ha ha! Now, on to our top story. Hey guys, oh it's me again, Aiden. Now we are heading to the top story in the book of Ephesians, so better get your Bibles and turn to the book of Ephesians. The gospel brings together all people that have faith in Jesus. Salvation is a gift of grace, not something that you can earn with good works. Forgiven sinners come to the church to obey God and do his work in the whole world. For more on that story, you can go to www.sharethejourney.ca. Back to you guys. That'll do it for this week. I'm Asher. And I'm Adeline. Sign off from the Good News Network.
grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this record. Seems. Should 
Hi, I'm Leo. Hi, Hi Leo. Leo. I'm a new dad. I uh, found myself window shopping this week for Fanny Pack. My car smells like McDonald's all the time. I'm turning into a real life tickle monster. I can't get these bad jokes out of my head. Like, why do melons have big weddings? Because they can't blow. Why do we know that? No, it's okay, it's okay. We should be proud to be dads. Oh, uh, so why don't we say the, the paternity prayer? God, God grant me serenity as I hide in the bathroom where my family can't find me. Courage to change every terrifying diaper and the wisdom to know when to belch and when not to. Amen. Yes. So let's get out there and be those fort building, tea party attending, cape wearing, homework helping, spider killing, dependable dads that those kids need. My yes! yes! <laughs> Wow, uh, that was a good video. I have some amazing dad jokes, but I will spare you. I, <laughs> I need to be in a dad support group just for those jokes. Just for those jokes. <laughs> yes. Just yeah. for those jokes. Uh, now, speaking of dads, speaking of dads, uh, as you saw in the good news, we're, we're doing the same things we did for moms, but we want to just share that generosity with dads and just bless the fathers, because normally we do something here at the facility. We're unable to do that because we're still not meeting. Uh, in person, but go out, scan that Q, uh, that QR code, and get your dad a free drink, free free coffee. Yes, get him a Timmy's. I get think is Timmy's. the uh, culturally appropriate Timmy's term. Dub Dub. <laughs> is that double double? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a double double. <laughs> or uh, or the old Wayne Gretzky. It's a nine by nine. Seriously, do people get that? Uh, some people. Wow. That's just like. <laughs> injecting energy right <laughs> into you. Don't do that. We're not no. recommending that or condoning that. Um, we had some ladies at the church facility here last night for the Beauty from Ashes women's yes. gathering. We don't know how it went because we weren't there, but if you're a yeah. woman who was there, let us know in the comments how much you appreciated it. Make sure you tell Laura for coordinating that. Thank Laura for that. Um, and uh, Tr Trish Purdy, uh, I was in class with her uh, she is an amazing, amazing person, great personality. Uh, I'm sure you were all blessed by it. Like, it hasn't happened yet, but I'm sure you're all going to be blessed by it. I, I know Trish yeah. personally. So We're great, very excited for great having live events here mm -hmm. at the church facility. Another one we're talking about is family camp. Now, we have been saying it's tentative as restrictions allow, but now we can be more definitive. Definitive. I love being definitive. We, letting people know. Lord willing, restrictions at that point are going to allow for family camp, maybe a little more simplified. But at family camp this year, we're going to have rockets. Rockets. Like legit, not the candy, like legitimate like rockets. Like blast off into outer space. My son asked me if he could put his sister on it for launch. I said we'd look into it. We could we'll try. See. <laughs> but Doug Campbell is organizing that aspect. Make sure you yep. sign up on our events tab for rockets. Yep. Um, it's also in the newsletter. There's a link in the newsletter. That's right. Yes. So make sure you sign up for the newsletter. If you have not signed up yet for the newsletter, you can do that on our website, www.sharethejourney.ca. That's right. We, we're really excited for family camp. We are. Another event we're talking about is softball. Uh, we've got some guys looking at the field today. Right. We're, we're going to see in the next few weeks if we can organize a softball game. Lyle is just on fire for that softball. I can't wait to see what he's got planned. He's excited. He's ready to roll. He's coming in tonight to work on that field, see what we need to do to get it ready. And it's just going to be a good time. I remember the softball league. I remember the softball league. Uh, we were the last ones to win the whole thing. So uh, before we were unable to, to keep going with it, but who knows? This, it, this sounds really like a, a dad conversation right here, doesn't it? It kind of does. I remember back in my back sporting days. Back in the day, days, my fish was this big. Before his yeah. knees started creaking. And cracking. <laughs> but softball, we are so excited for that. Yes. Um, we also want to let you know in, in all these events that we're talking about, we have a reopening plan here at Faith Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. July 4th That's is right. the date. We're going to have in-person services in July 4th. Person. It's only two weeks away. We've been talking to our volunteers. Basis. We're going to be able to have up to 100 people. 
yes. here in the auditorium. So we're going to set up the registration like we have been in the past. So you're going to register like you normally did uh, before we had to lock down again. Uh, and so that means signing up online through our app or going to the website and clicking the link there in the events tab or it'll be in the newsletter. So there's three ways basically that you can sign up or call the office. So there's a fourth. Uh, let us know. Let us know how if you're coming, if you don't have an opportunity or a way to sign up. Uh, we want everybody to be able to attend. So sign up. Come yes. in. We miss the faces. Even though we only get to see from the nose up, we still miss it. Yes. It's, it's not the face. It's the personality that comes with it. We miss those faces. People in the room. We are excited for that. And along with that, we're going to continue this online content because we know how valuable that is mm -hmm. to you as well. Um, Steve is going to be with us shortly in the book of Ephesians. We're going to be talking about breaking down barriers, breaking hostility. Down barriers. I, I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, as we continue on in our mission critical series. But before all that, uh, we're going to move into our offering time of the service. And there are many ways to give. You can text to give using 84321. You can give on our church app, which you can find by downloading the Church Center app and searching faithbaptist-gv. You can also give at our website, sharethejourney.ca, with that giving tab, or you can simply mail a check to our mailing address, and it's right there on screen. The old snail mail, they call it. Snail mail, snail yes. Snail mail. Uh, we appreciate all those who give faithfully, and giving is a big aspect of our worship. We want to live with open hands. We want to be generous people. We want that to be our testimony in the community, that mm -hmm. we are a generous church. Yes. Alex, would you pray for the offering and for Steve yeah. as he comes? Let's do that. Heavenly Father, um, we just thank you for the mission that you've, you've placed on us, the mission of Christ, Father. And uh, Heavenly Father, we just ask that you continue to uh, bless this, uh, this family uh, as you have and allow us to continue on that mission that you've placed on Faith Baptist Church, Father. Father God, I just pray that we're able to do as Josh said and just, just serve with open hands. Uh, allow us to be a generous church. Radically generous, Father. Allow us to just move in this, in this community in a way that um, is inspiring and allows people to draw near to the mission of Christ. And that is to see more people come to know who you are, Father. Yeah. So, Father God, we thank you for those who, who, who are going to give and who have given, Father, and uh, who continue to give, Father, because that is just a way for our mission to just to continue to move forward in your name. So, Father, we thank you for those things. And uh, as, as Steve comes up to, to speak, Father, on breaking down barriers, Father, I pray that uh, we all are able to break down our own barriers, our own personal barriers, Father, that are allowing us to um, just open up our doors, open up our, our arms, and, and allow people in. The, the names that we've been thinking about these last few weeks, Father, I pray that we continue to think about those names, continue to pray for them. And, um, Father, just create new and, and exciting ways to reach them for the mission of Christ. Mm. And, Father, we just uh, thank you for all these fathers, uh, we celebrate fathers today, Father, and uh, we celebrate you. And uh, Father, we thank you for, for all the great men who are, are sitting and listening to this, um, that uh, are raising families and, and being good dads. Uh, Father, and I just pray for their, for their day and that they be feeling blessed and, uh, and loved, not only today, but just every day. And Father, we thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Father's Day to all our dads today, and uh, hope you all have a great day. Treat your dad well if, you, if your dad's still, still with you, still my dad's in heaven, but uh, I guess he's doing well too, eh? Um, we are on a three-year journey through uh, the Bible. We're scheduled to finish up in about 11 weeks' time, so we're, we're, uh, we're making uh, really good progress. Uh, so uh, we're studying the New Testament letters uh, currently at the same time as we are going through the book of Acts. And I love this approach because it ties the writings of the apostles um, uh, to the local churches into uh, the mission work of the apostles in the establishing and teaching of those churches. Uh, so that's, I think that's probably the best way to study the New Testament. 
So this week we're in the book of Ephesians, and we're going to be focusing on uh, chapter 2 as we follow the schedule laid out in the Gospel Project uh, curriculum. And the curriculum calls this session Breaking Down Barriers uh, for reasons that will be apparent as we continue on this morning. Um, so uh, as we have seen in, uh, uh, in the book of Acts, Paul spent three years at Ephesus during uh, his third and final missionary journey. That's uh, see Acts 20, verse 31 for that information. That's longer than he spent anywhere else on uh, his missionary travels. Um, he spent the first three months in Ephesus teaching um, in the synagogue, but when the Jews resisted the gospel, he ended up teaching, uh, the text says uh, in chapter 19, it says he ended up teaching daily in the school of one Tyrannus, during which time it says all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Uh, now, when we read uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, it's almost like he hadn't met the folks he's writing to. Uh, so look, for example, at a couple of verses here. Uh, the first one is in verse 15 of uh, chapter uh, 1, uh, 15 and 16. For this reason, because I have heard of, you, heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus uh, and your love toward the saints, um, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. You know, Paul says, uh, I have heard of your faith. So that's one spot. Then this spot here in chapter um, uh, three, for this reason, I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you. So uh, there in chapter three, verse one and two, you have this idea, you get the idea that he hasn't met the people he's talking to. Now, how, how, uh, how can that, that be the case? And, and, and you know, what, what is that? Well, uh, probably the uh, factor that ca accounts for this is that Paul is writing this letter uh, some eight years after being there. And uh, maybe you know a lot can happen in eight years. So uh, probably the majority of the people he's writing to, he, he's, he hasn't even met. So the other factor we should keep in mind is that the letter appears to be intended for a broader audience as a, uh, a circulation letter for the whole Lycos Valley region of which Ephesus was the center. Um, this would have taken in churches uh, in places like Colossae and Laodicea, among others. Um, so this is also, the book of Ephesians is also one of a group of letters that uh, are referred to as the prison epistles um, or prison letters. Um, last week, <clears throat> we saw Paul arrested in Jerusalem, and he will spend most of his remaining days being detained in one form or another. Um, but Paul's perspective on that is really interesting. Uh, you know, in Ephesians 3, 1, he calls himself a prisoner for Christ Jesus. And in chapter 6, he refers to himself as an ambassador in chains. And uh, take, a look, take a look at what he uh, wrote, would later write to Timothy um, here in, uh, in 2 Timothy verses two, uh, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal, but, and I love this, he says, but the word of God is not, is not bound. Uh, we would do well to take note of that as we reflect on our situation throughout this whole COVID pandemic. Uh, with all of its restrictions. The word of God is not bound. And the word of God hasn't been bound over the course of the last uh, 12 or 14 months or whatever it's been. Um, God's still doing work. He's still using his word. Uh, now, we can't really just jump into chapter two. You probably realize that. We, we need to spend a little bit of time taking note of the things that Paul writes at the beginning of his letter because the truths that he sets out there at the very beginning are the big pillars that form the foundation upon which the structure of Paul's admonitions throughout the letter will be built. So um, the statements made by Paul in the first part of Ephesians chapter 1 are the reasons for all that follows them. Um, that's the way Paul writes. That's the way truth and understanding works. Uh, don't let anyone tell you that biblical faith is not reasonable. Uh, it's because of these things... Um, and because these things are true, that we should live like this. That's logic. That's the way Paul teaches. Um, so after traditional words of greeting, 
Paul begins with praise to the Lord for what uh, he has done. So in verse 3 of chapter 1, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Um, Now that simple two-word phrase, in Christ, is Paul's preferred way of referring to our situation as Christians. And in the next several sentences, he unpacks the, the, the big ideas that, that make up what that means, what it means for us to be uh, in Christ. He starts with God's, uh, talking about God's plan from the beginning, when he chose us in love to be his children for the glory of his grace. That's in verses 4 through 6. And how he saved us by redeeming us and bringing forgiveness for our sins in order to reconcile us to himself. Uh, and not just us, but with us all things, uh, verses 7 through 10, in heaven and, and things on earth. Uh, let's take a, a look at verses 9 and 10, actually. It says, Making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. Uh, take note there of, uh, you know, the three things, the mystery of his will or his, uh, according to his purpose, the mystery of his will according to his purpose. And then again, we have that phrase, in Christ, uh, the last part of verse 9, and, um, and then, and then the, the uniting of all things, making all things one, reconciling not only uh, us to himself, but reconciling all of the world uh, and all of creation and... Uh, uh, back back into fellowship with God. So um, take note of those things because they are some of those big truths that constitute the realities upon which the things that follow, follow from. Um, so then Paul writes about uh, the inheritance we have in Christ that awaits us in verse 11 and 12 of chapter 1, uh, but also of the presence and sealing of the Holy Spirit which we have now in which guarantees that inheritance. That's in verses 13 and 14. And then in chapter 1, verse 15, Paul says, for this reason. Um, That's a significant transition, and and to understand uh, that line of thought there is really important. Uh, uh, Let me say it one more time. The truth set out by Paul in the first 14 verses of this letter of instruction for those in Christ are the things that we need to keep firmly in mind as we take in what is to follow in his letter. For this reason. Some, some versions simply have the word therefore, uh, which, which means for this reason or because of this. And so the line of thought is critical uh, because, these, because these things are true, that then what should we expect to follow from these things? Uh, so what's Paul going to say? What are the implications of what he has said up to this point? When he says, for this reason. Well, in short, what Paul says next is, I pray for you. Because these things, of these things, I pray for you. And that's the short version. The longer version includes what he actually prayed for them. So uh, uh, so you can see it here, uh, chapter 1, verse 15 and following. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand uh, in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all." I don't think you can uh, miss the, f- the word all there that comes, is used. Paul uses it over and over and over again, all things. Jesus is Lord, uh, and he's Lord over all. Um, 
exalted Lord, glorified Lord. Um, so for this reason, Paul prays for them and he prays these things for them. Now, uh, Paul repeats that phrase again in chapter 3, verse 1, for this reason. And there, when he does, he suddenly realizes a need to explain something about his apostleship to the Gentiles, which most of those in the church were Gentiles. So, uh, And when he explains uh, his apostleship there in chapter, uh, chapter 3, uh, he, um, he explains how... Um, that included an understanding of what has been a, a bit of a mystery prior to his death, uh, prior to the death and resurrection of Jesus. Uh, take a look at um, chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. So another reference to the working of, of God's power there in, in us, or in Paul in this case. But he says, he says that this is a mystery, that the Gentiles are fellow, fellow heirs, members of the same body, partakers of that one promise in Christ Jesus through, uh, through the gospel. Now, uh, remember in chapter 1, uh, I'll just take you back there, uh, this is chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, making known to us the mystery of his will. We looked at this a few minutes ago, right? Those three things, the mystery of his will according to his purpose, those in Christ, and how God is uniting all things in, in him, things in heaven and on earth. So these are, these are truths, there are foundational truths that Paul is extrapolating from or, or, or stating the implications of. And so in chapter... Um, uh, three and verse um, and verse one, he says it again for this reason, and then he gives this explanation um, for uh, his apostleship to the Gentiles, so that they too can be brought into God's reconciling work. Uh, that's that goes from chapter three, verse one to chapter three, verse thirteen, and then in verse fourteen of chapter three, he returns to initial. Th his initial thought, and he says again, for this reason, or because of these things that I've stated earlier. Uh, so what are the implications? For this reason, what? Again, short version, it once again, is I pray for you. That's the short version. And again, the longer version consists of what he prayed for them. Take, take a look. Uh, chapter uh, 3, verses 14 through 19. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, <clears throat> see these are recurring themes here, right? That according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power, that power he talked about earlier, through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be, have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And then Paul says this, he prays this, now to him, and he breaks into a doxology here, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. You see the, that theme recurring, being repeated over and over again. According to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Uh, do, you, do you see how this ties together and, and ties into Paul's foundational statements in chapter 1 in those early verses? Um, again, um, I'll take you back to chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Let's read it again. Making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and on earth. Um, just before we go to chapter 2, uh, just take a quick look at chapter 4 here. Chapter 4, look, look at what Paul starts in chapter 4. I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, uh, for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling 
to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Um, and then verses 4 through 6, there's one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope that belongs to, um, to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Again, a continuation of those foundational themes of God's plan and his power working in us to, uh, to uh, re- be reconciled and to be one uh, together for his glory. All right, so chapter 2. Um, We'll spend a few moments there considering the removal of, of the barriers. What barriers? The barriers that stood in the way of the type of unity and reconciliation that God has purposed according to his will. So the first 10 verses of chapter 2 are all about the work that God did in their lives when they uh, believed the gospel and how they went from being dead in their trespasses and sins uh, to being made alive together with Christ. That's in verse 6. Uh, by the amazing uh, grace uh, of God in Jesus Christ. And then Ephesians 2, verses 8, 9, 10. Uh, probably many of you could recite those verses with me. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. That's verses uh, 8 and 9. And then verse 10, do you remember what it says? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That's, those are all implications of what God has uh, done and what Paul has stated in those first verses. The power that is at work in us to do what? Uh, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And then in verse 11, and this is where we start to pick up this, this theme about the breaking down of, of barriers in relation to what Paul has already said. So verse 11 and following says, Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that that time separated from Christ. Separation is the opposite of being united, right? Uh, Alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ, Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Brought near, how? By the blood of Christ. Let's keep reading. Verse 14, For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one, and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross." Through the cross. And, and, and notice the, the words here are uh, the, it's striking how Paul says this. Thereby killing the hostility. Uh, I guess, you know, maybe a, a play on words there. Um, but, but by the cross. Earlier he said by the blood. Draw, we, we're drawn near by the blood. And here he says that we are reconciled by the cross. Because the cross was what killed or destroyed the hostility or the barrier that existed. Um, In the temple courtyards in Jerusalem, there was an outer court known as the court of the Gentiles and an inner court uh, for Jews only. Uh, Separating the two courts was a stone wall described by Josephus as being uh, four and a half feet high. So that would be yay, yay high. Um, With an inscription forbidding any non-Jew to pass under penalty of death. Uh, and Josephus also tells us that there were these inscriptions 
uh, on this wall spaced out equal uh, of equal distance uh, from each other. And uh, Bible commentator F.F. F. Bruce says uh, that two of these notices, uh, both written in Greek, have been found. One was found in 1871, the other was found in 1935. Uh, and the text on the examples found reads uh, uh, like this. They say, No foreigner may enter within the barricade which surrounds the temple and enclosure. Anyone who is caught doing so will have himself to blame for his ensuing death. And Stott writes in his commentary that Paul was surely thinking of this barrier when he wrote of the dividing wall of hostility between the Jews and the Gentiles. Uh, remember in Acts 21 where the Jews had seen uh, Trophimus, the Ephesian. We talked about this last week. Uh, they'd seen Trophimus, the Ephesian, with Paul in the city, and they had assumed that Paul had taken him into the temple. And a riot broke out, which was a deadly situation. The dividing wall of hostility. I, I can't recall exactly when we talked about uh, this, but it was a while back earlier in the spring when we were in some of the earlier chapters of Acts, I encouraged us all to think about uh, all the bad blood that was between the Jews and the Gentiles. Uh, it was history. Uh, it was real. And, and, and it didn't start with the Romans either. It was before, before that, if you think back uh, about our, our journey through the Bible, you know, you have the Syrians and the Assyrians. Uh, those were the, the group that Jonah was sent to. Uh, the Babylonians, uh, who were the ones uh, that uh, destroyed uh, Jerusalem uh, back in uh, was that 586 B.C. Um, you know, if we're, if we're not careful, we can just glibly talk about forgiveness as something that simply uh, allows us to put all the bad stuff out of our minds. You know, we can... Uh, speak platitudes or think platitudes. You're just supposed to love your enemies, right? That Jesus said, love your enemies, right? Like that's something simple or easy to do. <laughs> I mean, when you really think about it, how's that, how's it even possible? How's it, how's it even possible to forgive uh, someone the, um, you know, the kinds of, of atrocities that uh, go on and are still going on in our world today? Uh, you know, we've been talking about the, the brotherhood or, or the family that's created by the gospel as it breaks down uh, those barriers. But we need to appreciate just how formidable those barriers were and are. Uh, we're talking about intense hatred. Paul calls it a wall of hostility. Uh, what is there that could possibly turn enemies into brothers? How is that even possible? What, what in the world could possibly even begin to have that kind of power. And Paul says, look at the cross. Uh, in verse 4, and, and it's in reference to our relationship with God and being reconciled to God, but also in reference to our, our being reconciled to others. In verse 14, he says, um, uh, he himself is our, our peace who has made us both one. Um, he is our peace. Um, Verse, the end of verse 15, so making peace, that he might create in himself one new man in the place of the two, so making peace, that and might reconcile us both to God in one body. Both, he might reconcile us both, uh, that's Jew and Gentile, to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. Please understand, this is a vital biblical theme that goes um, all the way back to the very first Bible story after the fall. Think of Cain and Abel. And it just continues on from there. Remember Joseph and his brothers in Egypt and in the book of Genesis. And you see, this isn't just about ethnicity. It's not just about manners and customs. It's not even about uh, just about skin color. Uh, or You know, it's, it's anything that divides or causes offense and separates us. Um, it's about sin. Uh, sins that we 
uh, commit not only against God, but against one another. And, um, and this isn't just some one time been there, done that kind of thing either, because uh, being family doesn't mean we never offend each other ever again or, or let each other down or disappoint one another. Um, you know, Scripture says that in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. That's in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And that's typically underst- it's typically understood by Christians that the cross provides a way for us to be made right with God. Um, but what, what is not typically understood is that the cross of Jesus also provides um, for all of our other relationships too. All of them. He is our peace. Our culture in general dismisses the gospel and repudiates the cross of Jesus. But have you noticed how badly our world is failing in these days to disperse hatred and find mercy and forgiveness? I heard just the other day on the news that hate crimes are on the rise, that the statistics show that there are more hate crimes taking uh, happening uh, in recent days than prior days. Um, have, and maybe you've noticed how, um, in the words of, uh, of uh, Thaddeus Williams, how a culture that prided itself in non-judgmentalism has become one of the most judgmental societies in history. Have you noticed that? There's so much judgment and so much shame and so little mercy and forgiveness in our culture today. And it just happens to coincide with our culture's uh, moving away from the traditional Judeo-Christian ethics, including belief in the reconciling power of the cross of Jesus. Uh, let's just um, read the... Uh, the last part of that chapter, chapter 2. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together in a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Um, The whole structure, a holy temple, a dwelling place, a a family. Um, When Paul prayed for these, uh, these people, he prayed that the the greatest realities, the realities of what it means for us to be in Christ would be lived out in their lives. And the implications of the gospel, the death and resurrection of Jesus, the suffering, substitutionary death of Jesus on the cross, the shedding of his blood for the forgiveness of our sins, the implications of that, the living out of that, the outworking of that, is not only just our reconciliation to God, but that, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And so being reconciled to God is also includes being reconciled to one another. Now, when you think about how this all applies in our lives, um, I don't know... I don't know of any relationship that is free from offense, where where sin's not an issue, not a problem, where people don't make mistakes, or or or, they, or we don't frustrate one another, disappoint one another in some way, shape, or form. And how do we move past those things? The gospel not only is intended by God to reconcile us to Himself, but also to reconcile us to one another. And the power of forgiveness is in the cross. Not only the power uh, of God to forgive us for our sins, but the power that he will impart to us by the gospel to forgive one another and to be reconciled to one another. 
You know, you might even think of your marriage, you might think that hostility doesn't describe your marriage, but you know it can. I know of some marriages where there's a lot of hurt and a lot of anger. You might think of your 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 family and your kids and or your neighbor and maybe hostility doesn't describe uh, the situation, but it can. I know of many situations, I'm sure you do too, where there's such an incredible need for the forgiving power of Jesus Christ to bring about uh, the amazing reconciliation that God wants to see uh, in our lives. It's not just a Jew-Gentile thing. Um, maybe, uh, maybe we could... Uh, just close in prayer and uh, pray that God will bless these, these truths, the scripture to our hearts. Will you pray with me? Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the, the letter that Paul wrote to the Ephesian church and to the other churches throughout the Lycos Valley. And uh, Lord, we together, we just thank you for the words that we've been able to read together this morning. And uh, we thank you for the incredible uh, truths that are set out in this letter. And Lord, we thank you for the potential impact that it can have in our lives. That because of these things, for, for this reason, because you have had this, have this great plan in place and that you are working out all these things uh, for your glory, because you have uh, died and shed your blood for the forgiveness of our sins, that that enables us to be reconciled to you and to each other. Lord, that because of these things, um, that we might live out of them. Um, we pray just like Paul prayed for these, these followers, um, these early uh, followers, that you would uh, enable us to be um, filled with the fullness of God, that we would be able to comprehend uh, the... Uh, the love of God, the height and the depth and the breadth and the width of the love of God and to know uh, that kind of love and that kind of power in our lives to affect that kind of change and that kind of, of dramatic uh, reconciliation in our lives. And we pray that you would do it all for your glory in these days and in the days to come. And we thank you for the work, the great work that you are doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for participating in our online service today. If you haven't yet filled out the Connect card, would you take a moment to do so? Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. While you're there, you can check out all of the video content that we've recorded over the years. Be sure to follow us on our Facebook page. And while you're on Facebook or YouTube, make sure to hit that notification bell. That way you will not miss a video. It'll send a notification to your phone, to your email. For all other information, you can go to our website, sharethejourney.ca. I really hope that you are encouraged to be a disciple making disciples this week.